just okay. Just it, go there. We've had this problem in the past. We just need to make sure that it's a. It specifies that it's a subcommittee of the board of selectmen. So uh, long as uh, uh, members of the board of selectmen. Yeah, I'm just say. Um, I'm just think. Um, Yeah, the point uh, raised. I just see the motion. Sure. Sure. We'll place the nomination. I don't even. You know what? I don't even know if we need a motion to appoint a subcommittee. I think all we need to do is just create a subcommittee of the board, a, a sub a three member subcommittee of the board. board. You know, a three-member subcommittee of the board, and then the chair will appoint the members. And then, as if their vacancies occur, the chair, as almost like a liaison assignment, will will make the thing. Uh, rather than work. rather than what we're doing here is we're creating a separate entity mm -hmm. over here, uh, yeah, which will get ourselves in a little board. bit of trouble. So we already, uh, yeah, we already I have, have no problem with that. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we create a. Board subcommittee to be comprised of three members of the board for uh, wastewater. A second. Any further discussion? Don't need Don't need All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. And, then, and then the chair makes the appointments. I just added to the liaisons. Yeah. Good idea. Just yeah, just added to the liaison. Mm -hmm. Glad you still have an extra. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe uh, a separate subcommittee list. Subcommittee of the board list. Because there's going to be other subcommittees too. Yeah, just add it to yeah. the spreadsheet. Yeah. Because yeah. we had the ALS. And now to item four in the presentation of the audit report for 2011. Yeah, board members, if you give me an opportunity just to uh, give a brief introduction, you have in your packet uh, two documents. The first is uh, a letter from uh, Mr. Hingston, Dick Hingston, who's in the audience, uh, April 16, 2012. Um, that document is considered a management letter, and that's a report on um, internal management and internal management controls and recommendations. And you'll see that there are a few items that have been listed there. Uh, however, the, the, the biggest piece of the report is the uh, financial statements. And um, Mr. Hingston is here to, uh, to present those to the board. We do this annually at this time of year. This is for the fiscal year ending on June 30th, 2011. Um, we have to close out our books and get our accounting records in order. Mr. Hingston has to come in and analyze them. Uh, keep in mind, he's an independent auditor, free from the influences of management and administration, he works for the board. So um, any questions that the board has, uh, feel free to ask of him, or of Liz or Marianne or I, who are also in attendance. If you don't mind, I'd like to give an opportunity to come up and present the statements of the board. Mr. Chairman. Do you want to, Mr. Basir? Uh, I'd just like to publicly thank Mr. Hingston for his contribution to the meeting with Moody's and the success. Thank you. I've heard that multiple times, so I will thank you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, I was going to mention it myself. Will you feel comfortable yeah, coming up and right. sitting? Just come right up. Little. Sure. Yeah, come right up. I did. I did. Craig, could you? Yeah. We know. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, I'd just like to thank you for letting me do the audit again. I always appreciate that. 
And, and I wanted to mention about the um, Moody's conference before I jumped in. Uh, I think the finance team did a real nice job presenting it to Moody's. I mean, I think they're um, the financial information to the town. And I think that Moody's was mostly impressed with, with your reserves, your, your, the way you established reserves, but not only that, the way you've been trying to preserve them. Um, I, th I think like the stabil sta various stabilization funds that you had that total of over three million, um, I think that that looks really good. Now you use them, but you also replenish them in the same year. And so that shows that you have a mode of re um, into your budget process uh, establishing of reserves for the for the tax phase. So um, I did. I have read though that a change in bond rating is about is about 0.25 percent. And so if yours had changed down, and you borrowed for 20 years, it would have cost you about two million dollars more in interest cost. And over 30 years, it would be about 2.4. Uh, so if you, have you decided how long you're going to do it for? Is it's it 25, 25 years. 25 years. So it's about two million dollars. So um, that's just a loose calculation I did real quick, but. So and it's and so you maintained your bond rating by doing and, and saved two million dollars by doing making the hard decisions that need to be made and uh, so I think the town has to be commended for doing that and it's a time when a lot of bond ratings are going down so <coughs> um, sorry if I jump into the management letter sure sure uh, the first comment has to do with the management fee for the uh, Hillview Enterprise Fund. The June golf, Hillview Golf Management invoice was not received until July 2011, so it was paid out of a two th it was paid out of a July uh, bill warrant, but it was paid out of the 2012 bill warrant. Whenever you receive a bill for services that are for the prior fiscal year, they should be paid out of that fiscal year. Um, sometimes you don't receive bills until the last cleanup warrant is done. They um, they do a final warrant in July to hold open for all the bills they received at the end. If you still haven't received it, then you can encumber the funds and pay it, charge it, charge it to the 2011 budget still, but even on a 12th warrant. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Just uh, that one, Dick. Mm -hmm. um, are we sure that that wasn't an additional, um, sometimes Hillview will pay up front, you know, uh, an additional payment to the management company from the prior yeah. fiscal year. And the, the no, but it was a June one. We did look at the we looked at the date of the invoice, and it was for services of um, June first to June thirtieth. Hmm. So, um, that would have would have just been what Liz's office that we just it just it just uh, you know what I think happened. I think that this had happened the year before too, but we didn't see it because we do it on a test basis. We we yeah. kind of scan invoices out of the next warrant. And I think that they counted 12 payments, and so there were 12 payments out of one out of in the 2011 expenditure account. So they said, "Well, we don't want to put 13 payments in there. It's just that the same mistake that happened in the previous year." Well, sometimes we do 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 13 payments. So in, in the years past, we have. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as I recall, Steve, <coughs> what was the practice of the Hillview Commission for quite a long time was they were actually ahead. Right by a payment, not in terms of what they've made, but in terms of their budget. And then I think they got into, when the economy went down, they slipped it. So they had, the money was there to pay, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but they lost that one month extra reserve they had. And I suspect you'd have to go back into history a little further maybe to find it. And that may be what you picked up this time around. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly worth looking, going back and looking at it. Yeah, but you might guess it. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Okay, you're looking at a calendar year. I think it's Bob pointed. I think if we look back historically, we did have one payment in reserves uh, over the years, yeah. uh, just to stay ahead of the game, mm -hmm. as the economy allowed for. Which for a number of years it did, and then. Uh, okay. Yeah. So is that uh, an entry that would be reversed and changed? Well, no, I think it's, it'll catch up at the end of this year. I think when you make the June payment at the end of this year, in June, or encumber it out of the uh, 2012 budget. So mm -hmm. that's you'll make sure that that. Okay. okay. Um, the next issue has to do with the tax recap sheet. Um, it, the town prepares a tax recap sheet 
This, this is in the, the blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. The town prepares a um, tax recatch sheet document um, annually. It's about a 20 page document and it calculates the tax rate. <coughs> um, included in it is a page uh, that lists all by funding source all of the various appropriations authorized at town meeting and including loan authorizations. And there were two loan authorizations that were voted at the 10 4 2010 10th special town meeting that didn't make it to the tax recap sheet. It's page four of the recap sheet. Um, even though the DOR requires that those reported on the re on that page of the recap sheet, it's for informational purposes. It doesn't affect the tax rate calculation. So it was kind of like no harm, no foul, but but it's still supposed to be reported on there. So we just recommend that you report it on the next one. Um, it's one of those ones, I'm not sure what the DL, the Division of Local Service does with it because uh, other than when, when, you, when they're looking at your um, statement of indebtedness that gets sent in annually, mm -hmm. they might check to make sure that all of those are, are recorded on that too. Okay, so this would have been the November 2010 recap. Yes. It was a prior, fiscal 11. prior time. Uh, mm -hmm. It was fiscal 11 prior, recap. Prior finance director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it wasn't, wasn't, uh, yeah. So it wasn't the Hillview issue, too. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not a Hillview. No, the Hillview was issued. No, no, no the Hill, Hillview prior, predates prior administration. Prior administration, prior administration. Yeah. It predates uh, okay. this finance director. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not a Hillview yeah. commission issue either. It's yeah. Prior. Uh, I said the Hillview right. issue. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Liz, Liz dodges all these bullets this year. Next year. Yeah. Next year will be. <laughs> 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 um, the next issue has to do with capital project funds. Uh, generally, the capital project funds are used to, uh, for project expenditures related to borrowings. Uh, in 2011, that's the way it's historically been here, in 2011, there was some projects that, w that had federal grants and borrowed money for them. So in order to simplify the project management, they included, they brought the revenues into the same account as the capital project fund as the, um, as the borrowed money. When that happens, the federal money becomes what they call tainted money and becomes subject to the, uh, so all the expenditures become subject to the restrictions and, and compliance requirements of the federal grant. So it's not a good idea to mix federal grant money and, and usually those are recorded in a special revenue fund mm -hmm. and and, and it's, you can demonstrate compliance with the laws and regulations by charging, you can say these are the expenditures that relate to that mm -hmm. grant. And, and you don't have to worry about the, the same requirements being for the project, the, the borrowed money. And, and also at the end of the project, when there's a balance left in, in the, the account, is it the federal grant money that's got to be sent back or is it the borrowed money that can be borrowed for other projects? So, <coughs> so Liz is gonna identify or have project manager identify <coughs> expenditures and pull them out and report them in a separate so that we can make sure that we can show the grantor that they comply with the federal requirements and not have all the other money subject mm -hmm. to it. And it's kind of similar, there were some articles voted for appropriations from the general fund and some of that money got transferred over to the um, capital project in, for similar projects. And that's kind of, although it's, it's causes similar but not, not as um, important problems. It's just at the end of a project, uh, your, your article money that was voted can just close back to free cash. If you say the project's done, it just closes out. And whereas if it's, again, is it the borrowed money or is it the, pro which it has to be used for a project that can be bonded for a similar period of time. Uh, so it's a matter of just keeping them separate. And I think in the past it had always been kept separate and it's just something ch changed in that last, last fiscal year. To, um, make them try to make the management of the grant or the projects a little easier by having them in one account. And in the MUNIS system, there is some project accounting that you can link the accounts together, and I think that you used that in your past when you were doing that. So it's really kind of, you don't have to do that to be able to, to have all the, um, get a total balance of those linked accounts. So I think Liz is gonna straighten those things out so we don't have to worry about um, the compliance requirements for the federal federal grants. Um, the next comment has to do with, um, with the new
standard that was implemented in, in 2011. The, the Government Accounting Standards Board has been very active in recent years. In 2003, they changed the whole face of the financial statement.